Okay, so what we're going to be looking at in part two is how to solve for a missing side length in a right triangle. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is our angle measure. So in this case we have an angle of 56 degrees. What we're now going to do is the same thing we did on the front. Step two says we're going to label our sides. So I know that side up here is my hypotenuse and the side down here at the bottom is my adjacent because it's next to the angle. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a ratio that has adjacent and hypotenuse in it. Now we know that from the front, cosine is going to be our angle of our function of choice here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by writing down our ratio. And we know our ratio is cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in this case we have cosine of 56 degrees is equal to x divided by 8. So the first thing that we would do here is we cannot solve, so we've got x divided by 8. To cancel out we would multiply both sides by 8. And that's how this next step came about where we had 8 times cosine of 56 degrees is equal to x. Now one thing that's going to be very very important is this statement right here. And we're going to talk about that more in class. So at this point, while you're doing your homework on your own, I would want you to leave your answer like that. 8 times cosine of 56 degrees is equal to x. Because I don't want you to go ahead and accidentally mess anything up. So in questions 7, 8, and 9, it says we're going to use the sine, cosine, or tangent to solve for x. And then we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. So like I said, we're going to stop once we get our function set up, just so we don't mess anything up in the calculator when we get back to class. So on question 7, the first thing I have is 67 degrees. And then I can see that x would be... I got my hypotenuse right here, but my hypotenuse is not used in this problem. 22 would be my adjacent because it's right next to my 67 and x would have to be my opposite. So what we're going to start with here is we're going to start by choosing the tangent function. And that gives us a tangent of 67 degrees is equal to our opposite over the adjacent, so tw x over 22. Just like we did up at the front, we're going to take we're going to multiply both sides by 22. And so we'd have 22 tangent of 67 degrees. And we can kind of see that we, we know what the answer is going to be. It's going to be 51.83 because uh, that was given to us on this. But the 22 tangent of 67 would be how I would want you to list your answer on this problem. So our next example, we have two sides and an angle. So we've got our 40 degree angle here. We need to go ahead and label our sides. So 8.3 I can tell is my hypotenuse because it is opposite of my right angle. X would be my adjacent because it's next to my angle. So when I'm looking for a correct trigonometric ratio here, I've got adjacent and hypotenuse which would leave me my cosine function. So cosine of angle 40 degrees is equal to my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So I've got x divided by 8.3 is equal to the cosine of 40 degrees. This right here is just a number. Okay, It tells us to take the cosine of 40 degrees. That gives us an exact value. So what we would do to get x by itself is we would multiply both sides by 8.3. We have 8.3 times cosine of 40 degrees, which would be equal to our x. At that point, we're actually finished with that problem. So our final example up here, we have x, 7.1, and 38 degrees. The first thing I'm going to look at is the exact same thing we've been doing. We're still going to find our angle. So here's my angle, 38 degrees. I'm then going to label my sides for step two. So 7.1 would be my opposite and x would be my hypotenuse. So when we set this up, 
we can kind of tell that sine of 38 degrees would be equal to our opposite, which is 7.1, over our hypotenuse, which is x. Now you might remember from inverses, we can't solve for x while it's at the bottom of our fraction. So the first thing we'd want to do here is multiply both sides by x. And so that's canceled out. Then, so now we have x sine of 38 degrees is equal to 71, so, or 7.1, I'm sorry. So what we need to do now is we need to get the x by itself, and so we have x times the sine of 38. To cancel this out, we need to divide both sides by sine of 38. So we have 7.1 7 divided by the sine of 38 degrees. And again, this would be how we're going to leave our answer. And we'll talk about how to plug that into a calculator the next time we meet. Okay, so for the next section, what we're going to be looking at is solving each right triangle for the measure of an angle. So we're going to be looking for an angle measurement. And we're primarily going to look at how we set this up. We're going to discuss this and show how you put this in a calculator when you get to class. So the first thing we have is we have angle x here. So now that I have my angle x, I'm going to be looking for my two sides. I'm going to label the two sides. So 18 would be my opposite. And that makes 30 my hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, that tells me to use the sine function. So I have sine of, 30 of x here is equal to 18 over 30. And we're gonna, again, we're going to look at how to actually solve that when we get to class on either Wednesday or Thursday. So our next problem, on problem 11, we again have our angle x, and this time we have our two sides. We have 8, which would be our opposite, and 7, which would be our adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, I know that works with the tangent function. So I'd have the tangent of angle x is equal to 8 over 7. And this would be a problem that I could solve with a calculator very easily. So on number 12, we have our angle x here. And now that we have our angle x, we need to label our two sides. I see 11 opposite the right angle, so that's my hypotenuse. And that leaves 5 is right next to angle x, so that's my adjacent. Now, I know that the function that connects the adjacent with the hypotenuse is my cosine function. So cosine of angle x is equal to 5 over 11. And that's all we have to set up for each or for each of these triangles here. Okay. Now, what I want you to do before you come to class on Wednesday or Thursday just like we were talking about a second ago. To solve each triangle, I want you to find all the unknown side and angle measures. Round to the <coughs> nearest thousandth or hundredth and tenth for degrees. We'll talk about how to exactly come up with that again when we're plug in a, plugging it in a calculator next time. However, I just want on number 13, I want to remind you of something. The angles inside of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So on this problem, I would have 23 plus angle R plus 90 degrees, because we know one of them has to be 90 degrees for it to be a right triangle, has to equal 180. So when we combine our like terms, we'd have 113 plus angle R equals 180, and that would tell us that angle R would be left to be 67 degrees. So that one is going to be really easy to find. So we have two ways that we can solve for the next two sides. You can pick whichever angle you would like. So let's say I'm looking for angle R, or side length R. Okay, I'm looking for side length R. I can 
I have to choose an angle to work with here. So the first angle that I'm going to choose to work with is I'm just going to choose 23. Could you have chosen this R in 67 degrees? Yes. And you'd have no problem with any of the math. It's just kind of your choice on which one you want to do. So based on my angle being 23 degrees, that would make R be my adjacent and 126 my hypotenuse. Now, because I chose 23, making R my adjacent, that means side length R, I would have cosine of 23 degrees would be equal to R over 126. And just like earlier, we could solve that equation. So now if I'm looking for N, I know that N is equal to the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to be looking for the sine function. So sine of 23 degrees would be equal to N over 126. And again, we multiply both sides by 126, and it would then become a calculator problem. What I want you to do is I want you to try to come up with some sort of expression for number 14 and number 15 for each of the missing unknowns. And w again, we're going to look at how to put this in a calculator on Wednesday. This is for a completion grade, and we are going to be having a short assignment in class that will be due on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on if you're an A or a B day. And so I hope this is probably going to be a video you're going to want to watch several times to make sure you're very comfortable with the material. And again, thank you for watching, and have a great evening.